This is a cheap mini dehumidifier based on um, the solid state uh, Peltier junction devices that I bought from eBay. So I'm just going to turn it off now. It's been running all day. So turn it off and unplug it. Operates at 12 volts at about 3 amps. And it's been running since it arrived about uh, 12 maybe it was. And it's now 10. So it's been running for 10 hours. So let's see how much water it's taken out there while the other dehumidifiers in the house have all been busy pulling lots out. Yeah, that's not really that impressive. I mean, okay, it's only rated 30 watts, but yeah, I was kind of expecting more than that. But anyway, I'll just put that small portion of water down where I can't kick it. The Water receiver has a floating bottle in it with a um, plunger here and it's got a scoop to receive the water. Inside the, de the uh, dehumidifier are two switches. One switch detects when the drawer has been pushed in and the other detects when it's full of water. So let's um, open this up shall we. It's got deep deep screws. are too deep and I don't have the correct screwdriver for these oh well not to worry oh that's working I can kind of guess what's inside this it, it'll be the Peltier junction which is a little square plate that when you apply a voltage across it um, it heats at one side and it cools at the other you can find more information on that if you do a search on Wikipedia for Peltier. It's also called thermoelectric cooling or heating and it's the same thing that's used in these little portable um, fridges you get for campers. together at the bottom I think. Oh, there it goes. Okay, the first thing that I'm seeing here is a heat sink, an uh, aluminium heat sink with a smooth finish and I'm guessing the Peltier Junction is sandwiched in here. And there's quite a lot of condensation in this so it's obviously the cold side that's collecting the water. The principle here is that as the air is pulled in, air holds a certain amount of moisture according to the temperature of the air and if it's quite warm air and it's laden with moisture when it hits a cold surface like the windows in your in your bedroom or whatever it condenses on them and uh, water forms in the surface so what they're doing here is they've got a they're pulling air past a cold fin and uh, any moisture in the air will hopefully condense condense on that so i'm just going to get a pair of snips and cut this little tire up here There's a circuit board in the front which has an on-off switch and it's basically it's a little marshalling board with just connectors. So let's uh, pull that off. I'm going to make sure that I don't uh, pull off connectors that are possibly keyed. This is a bit tanglesome. Oh, very tangled. Um, I can leave the switch one on, but I'll pull that one off. That's the whole front uh, panel removed. 
The circuit board in the front really does just appear to be for marshalling power um, about. It's got an on-off switch, it's got two resistors and two LEDs, one which says on and one which says full to show when the tank's full. So I'll put that down at the moment. Now... some screws. Oh, there we go. Okay. So all I've got left in the base now is the two micro switches and their wiring loom along with the power coming in. So that can go as well. Oh, and a wee grill's popped off the top so it can go down as well. And let's see what the actual unit itself looks like. Computer style fan, quite a sort of rough, noisy sounding computer style fan. I think this has been engineered for economy. Huge heatsink inside. This clips on. Okay, the whole fan assembly comes off. Okay, just a generic 12 volt brushless fan. Okay. That's changeable, if needs be, for a better quality one. Oh, and that's really it. It's just a big heat sink on the back for cooling, because the the junction, while it gets cold on this side, it gets hot on this side. And if you actually spot the polarity, I believe it uh, just reverses it, and this side would get hot and that side would get cool. Uh, let's see if we can... Is this a good idea? If I can go into the junction itself without damaging it. Don't want to damage it. It's brand new. Not that that ever really stops me. So the design of it is such that the air seems to be pulled in from the front, pass around the back of the unit, through the fan, and then gets ported out the top, uh, past the, the um, hot side of the heatsink. Oh, and there it is. There's not really an awful lot to it, is there? The back of it's quite wet as well. I'm going to have to mop that down a bit before I put this back on. I think I'll probably have to apply a bit more heat sink compound as well. It's important that these don't overheat. Uh, if they do, um, for instance, if you just operate this pelter junction out in free air, it would damage it. Seems quite low down. I actually thought the junction would actually be more centrally positioned. I wonder if there's a reason for that, because it means that the where the two screws go in, it pinches, it's actually pinching it off centre. I don't know if this is... Oh, no, no, it's not. There we go. It says XHC... Sorry, it's XHC TES1-12704. And it seems to be a fairly solid little device all potted in with a silicony stuff. Okay. I think I may reposition that in the middle when I put this together. Again. I'm sure that the load should be pressed down across it more evenly. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I'll just destroy it in the process. Th when these uh, screw up, the there are rubber spacers underneath, so it can tighten up without uh, crushing this too much because uh, I'm guessing that with the thermal expansion contraction it moves slightly. But really, that's it. Uh, a cold side that's uh, fairly smooth and angled so that the water theoretically drips off it, uh, biased towards the front. 
um, and the back is just a huge great big heat sink so that makes really most of it just stick 12 volts across that and bingo there you go it will just take wash out no uh, humidistat or anything like that so it's not going to cut out when it reaches the uh, a specific humidity but having said that uh, in any typical room I don't think it is ever going to reach any specific humidity um, but I suppose you know it has its uses and it's quite novel I'm going to experiment with this and uh, see how much uh, moisture it does take out. I like the idea of um, a, a solar panel running this so that, you know, just on bright days, all it does is just gently drip water out uh, that it's taken out the room. Yeah, but in the meantime, I'll be sticking to my mains powered dehumidifiers, I think, but it was certainly worth taking to bits. <laughs>